a long time ago. When the first British tourists traveled to the Swiss mountains, they found lots of snow and vast picturesque glaciers, a paradise for skiing and sledding. Is the snow good? Oh, well, it's, it's a bit um, solid at the moment. And soon an industry emerged with perfect slopes, ski lifts, hotels and spas. But eventually things began to change. Climate change affected snowfall and glaciers began to melt rapidly. Is there any way to stop this? The effects of climate change are visible. Since 1850, Swiss glaciers have lost 60% of their volume. Switzerland is set to lose an important water reservoir as the glaciers continue to melt, affecting farming, hydropower production and transport on Europe's main waterways. Woo! Average global temperatures have risen by 0.85 degrees compared to pre-industrial times. But in Switzerland, the increase has been 2 degrees Celsius. While oceans provide a cooling effect to some regions, this has less of an effect on landlocked Switzerland. Lakes will form in the place of Switzerland's glaciers, creating the risk of flooding and landslides. Researchers expect existing vegetation zones to shift upwards by over 500 meters. In the Alps, deciduous trees like oaks and maples will replace pine trees. The spruce, the most important tree for the Swiss forest industry, is likely to disappear from the Swiss lowlands due to exposure to harmful organisms like the bark beetle. Rising temperatures and less snow at lower altitudes will also add to the risk of forest fires. Temperatures over 40 degrees in cities and little snow in winter. In 40 years, Switzerland might look and feel like a Mediterranean country. Ski resorts like Zermatt or San Moritz will have to expect far less snow cover than today. In order to depend less on winter tourism, Resorts are increasingly marketing the Alps as a cool summer destination. Oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine. Farmland will get drier and more irrigation will be needed. On the other hand, in the future, it should be possible to grow rice on the north side of the Alps. Switzerland produces 60% of its electricity with hydroelectric power. Long periods of drought could have a major impact on hydropower production. Since Switzerland also plans to phase out nuclear power, it'll have to make more of an effort to promote renewable energy and to improve energy efficiency. Hmm. Luckily, the solar industry still has a lot of potential. Researchers have found that solar panels could be installed on more than half of the country's 9.6 million rooftops. Heat waves are a major threat for Switzerland. The long, hot summer of 2003 caused about 1,000 premature deaths in Switzerland. Higher temperatures also favour the spread of infectious diseases previously confined to the tropics, brought by carriers like the Asian tiger mosquito and ticks. That's a lot for Switzerland to deal with. But when it comes to who's causing CO2 emissions, mm. the Swiss are hardly innocent. <laughs> so let's look at Switzerland's climate sins. Yes, the Swiss do lots of traveling by train, and Swiss trains run on hydroelectric power. Looking at emissions from combustion and cement production, the country is indeed doing quite well compared to others. But high levels of convenience and consumerism jack up the national carbon footprint. If you account for so-called grey emissions, in other words, producing goods for the Swiss in other countries, the Swiss per capita emissions more or less double. Inside Switzerland, the main greenhouse gas emissions come from transport, buildings, industry and agriculture. Despite Switzerland's dense rail network, more than half of commuters drive to work. Road transport, including buses and delivery vehicles, accounts for about 40% of Swiss CO2 gas emissions. 
people. The fear of catching COVID-19 on public transit has put many citizens back behind the wheel or on motor scooters, as reported in a study by the Deloitte Switzerland consulting firm. The average Swiss flies about 9,000 kilometers per year, twice as much as 20 years ago. But there is growing public pressure to curb air travel. In summer 2020, the Swiss Parliament passed a carbon tax on flight tickets. Services like MyClimate offer guilt-ridden polluters the option to pay to offset their carbon footprint. Buildings account for over a quarter of all CO2 emissions. Switzerland is at the top of the list of European countries that rely on heating oil and is above average when it comes to heat loss. One reason is that many of the buildings are relatively old. So there's lots of potential to bring down emissions here. But high renovation costs are slowing things down. Nearly a quarter of Swiss greenhouse gas comes from industrial activities. Since January 2020, Swiss companies have been participating in the European Union's Carbon Emissions Trading Scheme. It's based on the idea that the polluter pays for the emissions they're creating. Agriculture generates one-seventh of emissions in Switzerland. Over the years, the number of cattle being raised has declined, resulting in a slight reduction of emissions. Cows significantly contribute to the greenhouse effect by producing methane gas when they burp and fart. And unless the Swiss eat less meat, cutting more emissions from agriculture further will be difficult. What is Switzerland doing to keep its glasses from melting and to fight climate change? Find out in part two of this series here.